very much into sports and uh, physical activity and uh, the current issues uh, have been uh, highlighted to me by Mr. Isalia with regards to some of you having uh, difficulties in uh, sleeping and then getting into a regular routine. Hello. Yes, Doctor, I will. Uh, I will. Uh, there is some background noise coming from uh, yeah. one Mr. Jeremy TM. Can I kindly mute you, sir, so that. Uh, yeah, sure. No problem. Okay, okay, Doctor. Thank you. Continue, Doctor. Thank you very much. Okay. Right. Are we all, uh, you know, uh, audible to each other? Uh, yes, Doctor. Most of them uh, uh, can, of course, hear you. Uh, uh -huh. and, but uh, we cannot hear, hear from them, I presume. Uh, we cannot because, Doctor, a lot of background uh, noise is coming uh, okay. simultaneously from these mics. So okay. we have eight participants and also with uh, all your approval, I, I'm recording this discussion uh, and the screen, no Doctor. Problem. No problem. Okay, thank you, So in, you know, in this era, I think it's important to understand what is happening from a medical perspective and uh, hopefully try to keep a sense of balance about how we go about day-to-day uh, -day activities uh, and then keep our fitness level uh, going on as well as the mental well-being you know, of uh, all the uh, athletes and uh, students, you know, that's, that's an important aspect and as well as the adults. So first and foremost, uh, you know, you're all very well conversed with uh, what is happening uh, with the coronavirus infection. Uh, we are in a lockdown situation essentially, uh, but we are fortunate than the rest of the world uh, that the number of cases are not rising uh, rapidly at this stage. Um, Important things to think about, you know, when we uh, feel tired or uh, not having the same uh, zest to go ahead and then do our day-to-day -day activities, it is important that we um, uh, consider why this could be. It could be entirely due to the fact that, you know, a lot of people are anxious yeah, and then they can't, you know, carry on with their day-to-day -day activities. Uh, and then, of course, the inherent anxiety could be one of the reasons uh, behind all this. But uh, also important, if you do have a fever, cough, sore throat, runny nose, please, uh, uh, you know, get yourself checked out. You, know, that's important. you can uh, contact the helplines as, as recommended. Make sure that you're not having a low-grade fever. Uh, doing exercises uh, at, at times when you are under the influence of a viral infection uh, or fever is not the greatest of ideas for even for the athletes. Normally, uh, the risk with uh, coronavirus as well as influenza viruses, you can get the weakening of the heart, you know, uh, with myocarditis in, uh, in certain group of people. And then, of course, that's not a good Doc situation uh, to start doctors, exercising. Doctor, sorry to interrupt you. Small request to slow down the speech. Uh, 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 sure, sure. Understand. So, viruses, if they do, you know, infect you for whatever reason, sometimes can make the heart, you know, go bizarre. You know, the, the, the heart must, must, could become dilated and it doesn't pump as well as uh, it should normally. So under these circumstances, if you are feeling under the weather, if you think you've got a bit of infection, best thing is to rest, give it at least a 48 hours break. Uh, you know, just accept the fact that, you know, you don't have to necessarily push yourself through all the difficulties, you know, if you are under the weather for whatever reason, in a situation of an infection. But, you know, if this is uh, simply boredom or anxiety, etc., a uh, graded exercise program is an important part to keep yourself uh, moving about. Um, and then what, can, what sort of activities can we do to help ourselves? Um, the, um, uh, those of you who have uh, got access to uh, um, yoga, uh, or uh, cycling on a stationary bike um, or Pilates. Uh, those kind of exercises are pretty good uh, or even simple gymnastics, you know, if you have got uh, a training on these things uh, without injuring yourself. If you can engage yourself in these exercises for about 30 to 45 minutes, you know, a day, uh, a sensible workout at the uh, level that you normally, you don't have to necessarily run to the level that you normally would do. 
but keep it at a moderate level. Targeting for about eight to 10 minutes uh, metabolic equivalence when you're exercising. Uh, that would be equivalent to about, I would say about stage three of a basic running test, you know, when you do a stress test. That kind of a level of- Exercise ECG, no doctor? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, if we can do, uh, you know, with a bit of incline, maybe about one to 2% uh, gradient, you know, and if you can uh, uh, keep uh, your heart rate around, say, uh, the heart rate is calculated like this normally, what you can target, you know, when you're training. Um, if you are uh, aged, say, 40 years, uh, your maximum allowed predicted heart rate, uh, we would expect 220 minus 40. So that's targeting around 180 and out of that 85% is more than adequate for most of us to target. You shouldn't rush to exceed that. You know, that's not a great thing to do if you're particularly feeling not quite right. Do not try to exceed the, uh, the heart rate. If you have got a simple device at home, your iPhone or whatever, or if you're simple pulse check while you're on peak exercise, you can get an idea about how the heart rate varies, okay? So target, you know, about 85% of your maximum predicted heart rate for a healthy, otherwise well individual, you know, that should be adequate exercise for us. If you get that heart rate down for 10, 15 minutes and then get the heart rate down to submaximal level coupled with uh, uh, stretching, uh, bending, uh, and uh, if you want to, you know, again, uh, if you're a martial arts fanatic, you know, you can actually do martial arts as a good way of keeping yourself uh, supple and uh, uh, exercised um, and then uh, once you um, had your workout make sure that you know you keep yourself well hydrated dehydration is one of the problems um, that makes people sleepy these days staying indoors being under the fan and uh, being uh, under the air conditioning um, oh, you know, the, the weather outside is also not the greatest, you know, sometimes, you know, so you should keep yourself well hydrated with adequate uh, fluid intake. Target fluid intake, you know, roughly about two and a half, three liters, you know, for a healthy adult per day should be um, uh, good enough uh, to keep going. And then, of course, if you have got a diarrhea or, you know, other uh, conditions where you lose fluid, then, of course, you should uh, take uh, more. Uh, to keep yourself well hydrated. So uh, that's about the exercising side. You know, of course, uh, your regular day-to-day -day triathlete kind of workout might not be possible in uh, most of you with the lockdown being there. Uh, but, you know, if you keep on a daily route uh, schedule, uh, going about 45 minutes, uh, this kind of exercise program, I think it should be um, helpful to um, you know, get through the days um, until you can... Uh, get back to your normal training schedule. Now, um, people who have difficulty in sleeping, one of the things that you can try is uh, uh, if you're a person who's um, used to exercising in the morning, you could perhaps, you know, make it in the evening. Evening exercises, you know, if you do your workout, you know, have enough fluid, have a bath or wash, you know, and then get to bed, you know, most of the people will fall asleep, you know, without too much of a bother. Uh, that's one of the things that can be tried, you know, with uh, changing your day-to-day -day, uh, workouts. And then uh, some people mm -hmm. do get benefit if you have persistent difficulty in sleeping. There are certain medications that can help, but of course I would not uh, advocate that to healthy people. It's always better to try simple maneuvers first. And then if that is uh, not helping, go and see uh, a doctor, have a discussion, uh, see what could be the problem. If it's an issue about uh, onset of sleep, then there are certain drugs that can be tried. Certainly there are uh, uh, medications that might help to restore the circadian rhythm of the, the, the body. You know, the, the, we all have a morning wake up and a night uh, sleep, you know, a kind of a, a clock build up into our systems. And some people do, um, you know, have this uh, going off due to various reasons like, lights, uh, you know, being kept on in your household, you know, at uh, inappropriate times. You know, some people tend to watch TV these days, you know, until late night, you know. So those kind of, you know, things could potentially affect your sleep hygiene. Um, so the better thing for us is to target the time that you normally would sleep. And for a 30 to 40 year old uh, person, maybe we could potentially uh, target around a uh, um, minimum of uh, six to eight hours of sleep, uh, uh, good quality sleep, that will be helpful. 
and as I said, a lot of people do have at the you know at this time of the year i've got bunged up noses um, a bit of snoring uh, it could be a combination of the fact that you know the nasal passages get stuffed up with uh, 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 with the air conditioning or uh, fans being around um, and also the uh, possibility of viral infections being in the background as well as of course the the food and uh, not doing much much exercise might add to the the the, the situation so if this kind of situation happens uh, we should target uh, trying to sleep uh, change our sleeping position if posture if we possibly can uh, rather than lying on your back if you are used to lying on your back you know it's probably better for you to lie on a side than sleep in which case uh, the airways and the upper airways uh, do not collapse um, and then uh, will help keep the oxygenation going and if you snow less generally you have good uh, quality oxygenation throughout the night then you feel refreshed in the morning um, and then of course if you have got a bunged up nose uh, please think about a steam inhalation this is actually a good option that can be tried uh, generally it's uh, it, it will help the the mucus to flow and then keep uh, the airways open um, and those of you who actually have got uh, nasal decongestions at home if you do have them and if it's a chronic problem maybe if you had chronic sinusitis you know that had been uh, noticed before um, if you have, do have got medications you, know, you could use it at the uh, night before you go to sleep that also may help the situation uh, and then of course you know uh, trying to keep focus you know rather than all the negative news we hear uh, on a day-to-day -day basis uh, we should also consider thinking about uh, positive vibes you know you think this is an opportunity that has been given to establish your family you know harmony your uh, friendships you know your um, you know things that you never had time to focus on before this is a time to think that you know we could refocus our attention it's not just about you know uh, what we used to do before but there are so many things in life that we could not pos potentially focus ourselves to so think this as an opportunity that has been given to you to focus on on these uh, matters if you enjoy reading books um, you know take a look at uh, night you know for a couple of hours uh, before you go to bed um, uh, read that that might help you to not out to sleep but i would not encourage you know take people taking coffee um, uh, or stimulants you know at night time uh, to help you uh, sleep it doesn't uh, really help uh, if you have problems with sleeping reading definitely will help um, you to you know refocus your mind secondly if you are doing yoga exercises it's a physically and med uh, mentally uh, likely to refocus your attention uh, it will also help to boost up your immunity uh, to a certain extent you know so if you do have a training in them or you are willing to try you know certain simple manuals you can try them thirdly of course you know a good old meditation you know is, is something that uh, a lot of people do find uh, helpful being mindful about the environment and uh, uh, people around you and then you know either you can think about you know um, your own uh, breathing movements you know and then stay focused or you could you know potentially wish other people well you know for about 10 15 minutes if you do want to meditate um, that might also be a good option for the youngsters of course you know the the, the young children uh, sometimes you know all these strategies you know might not work um, to certain extents, of course, you know they need uh, activity more than the, the adults, um, and then uh, of course they like to have fun. Um, if you do have got um, uh, uh, things like uh, uh, Wii consoles or things that can, can can keep your arms legs moving at the same time of enjoying a bit of a game, uh, you know that's not a bad idea. You know I, I certainly do let my kids, uh, you know, play. Uh, V sports or V games, you know, if you do have a sports console that you can use um, to keep them, uh, you know, exercise inside the house premises so that they don't have to necessarily go out. If you do have a, a bike, uh, you know, think about, you know, attaching the, the stand and then keep, they keep it on the stand and then try to ride in one place. That's one of the other options that can be tried. Create an obstacle course for your children, you know, in the, in the living room, uh, you know, get them to do something new. Uh, try to get, play a game of skittles, you know, with uh, with uh, bottles and you know whatever you have, uh, and then uh, keep them um, entertained. Uh, that's one of the ways to, uh, you know, keep their spirits going and then make them happy. I think uh, 
being happy also just uh, helps us to overcome the, the, the anxiety and the, the worry that we apply with uh, day-to-day news and uh, what is happening outside. So that's an important aspect of uh, uh, trying to tackle the, the, the depressive uh, you know, things that are happening elsewhere. Uh, Doctor, shall we give the audience a few minutes so that they can ask anything to clarify? Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. I'm here, so fire away questions you know, as they keep uh, coming through. Yes, audience, please uh, take this few minutes to uh, speak with Doctor and uh, clarify anything you want regarding this presentation. You could ask, you know, anything if you want, you know, about uh, medications. If anybody's using medications, you know, if there are diabetics, uh, you know, people who are in the, in the, you know, in, in in the in the audience, you know, who do use uh, regular prescribed medications, etc. Those are things also that you can discuss, um, and then how you integrate this and whether these are causing any effects, etc. You can ask far away any questions. Anradha Rajiv. Oh, hello, doctor. Hello. Yes, yes, hello. Yeah, is it okay to work out every day? I mean, uh, is it good for the immune system? Yes, I think, you know, if, as I told you, if you are not under the influence of infection actively, if you don't have a okay. fever, uh, if you don't think you've got a viral infection, I think, you know, about a day to every day, if you target around 30 to 45 minutes of, you know, physical activity, um, you start with okay. a uh, in a graded program, you build it up, you know, in about, you know, five, ten minutes, you know, and then, then, you know, once you're warmed up, you know, you go ahead and then uh, hit your peak based on your age, uh, you know, as I told you, the 85% uh, of the target heart rate, if you can uh, achieve that, either on a treadmill, yeah. a bike, well, you know, um, you know, or even simple yoga, uh, you know, those kind of exercises would be very helpful to keep yourself supple and uh, focused. So target around 30, 45. Okay. Minutes. okay, what's the best workout for the, to uh, boost the immune system? What would be uh, the best workout? Best, you know, I think, you know, we have to remember, uh, I'm again coming back to this yoga, uh, you know, kind of uh, activities because they have been proven to improve your immunity and uh, uh, longevity. Uh, so those things are pretty good. But uh, any type of exercise, you know, that uh, allows you to keep your heart uh, and uh, vascular system uh, in, in tip top shape, you know, should help. So things like, um, uh, you know, uh, cycling or even if you have a punch back, you know, boxing, martial arts, you know, if you have a, a person who's uh, able-bodied, you can practice your martial arts. If you've got a less able-bodied person, you could try something like Tai Chi or Wushu, uh, basic moves. You don't have to know every single move. But uh, it is the idea of, you know, keeping yourself uh, moving about. Even the simple act of, you know, lifting a maybe one kilogram weight and then lifting it up, you know, up and down, uh, you know, uh, for about a minute, you know, that, uh, you know, every hour if you want to do it, you know, somebody who's debilitated, that actually is uh, proven to help uh, boost your immunity and then uh, improve your overall uh, uh, lipid, uh, lipids, you know, your blood components will all improve. Oh, okay, thank you, doctor. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Okay, so I've, uh, Doctor, there is a private question coming into my screen. Uh, I don't know whether yes. you can see my screen with the pop-up. No, no. I can see that. Yeah, I just you know had a look at it. Uh, yeah. Fat burn tips. You know, that's that's the question. You know, that's been asked. Of course, you know, remember the deposition of fat is a is a, um, a dynamic equilibrium about the, what you take in uh, uh, versus how much you burn out. Now, uh, being inside the house, you know, a lot of uh, people do get, you know, hungry and, you know, feel uh, like eating. And of course, you know, again, when you're anxious, some people tend to eat more. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, so if you do have a tendency like that, first thing we need to try to uh, cut down on the, the caloric intake, you know. So for a healthy, uh, you know, male, you know, you'd probably target around 3,500 calories uh, maximum, you know, you don't want to exceed that much uh, on, on uh, times that um, um, that uh, you know we cannot exercise. You don't want to ex exceed that uh, very high levels. You, for a female, you know anything about two thousand eight hundred to three thousand um, calories should be the maximum ceiling that you would be targeting. But uh, you know if you do feel hungry, what I would suggest is you know if you want to cut down on the intake. Think about salads, you know, you know, your, um, if you can prepare a salad uh, with some uh, low-fat cheese, uh, um, 
a slice of fish or something, you know, the protein content is not a big issue because the protein uh, content doesn't really contribute to the caloric intake as much as we think it would be. Uh, but uh, the saturated fat content and the carbohydrate content, you probably should uh, try to keep, uh, you know, uh, within the 30% mark, okay, of, uh, of the intake. Um, then uh, what I would suggest is, you know, do the, the exercise program, regular exercise program on a daily basis is very good. Uh, if you are used to uh, aerobic kind of exercise that we discussed about, or if you are not used to an exercise program, at least dancing, uh, you, know, you know, if you are used to dancing, you know, put on, a, put on some music and then uh, dance, uh, you know, for about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, uh, you know, that might help you to uh, uh, burn the calories, uh, you know, adequately. Yoga is very good, you know, if you can do it again, uh, it's, uh, the benefits of that has not really been uh, utilized by a lot of people. Uh, you can actually trim your fat, you know, by uh, doing that uh, exercises uh, regularly. That's one thing that you can do. Um, I would uh, advocate against using any uh, uh, medications. There are certain people who used to use medications to try to burn the fat. There are certain classes there, but they're only reserved for people who, uh, for medical reasons, cannot, you know, exercise. If you've got the intractable heart failure or if you've got um, uh, morbid obesity, etc., there are certain other options that can be tried. But for the general population who can exercise, balancing the intake versus uh, um, uh, amount that you spend, uh, having a sensible plan is, is the way forward. Doctor, we have a question from Mr. Steve Niroshan. Uh, okay. He's, he's asking, uh, doctor, what are your thoughts about intermittent fasting? Okay. Now, uh, intermittent fasting is an interesting uh, concept. You know, uh, some people have uh, uh, suggested that intermittent fasting uh, could um, uh, result in uh, uh, loss of uh, weight and uh, fat deposition, etc. But, uh, you know, some, uh, in my honest opinion, uh, rather than having uh, a big couple of meals and then fasting, the better the sensible thing to do is to spread it out. You know, the reason being, uh, it is not just the calorific content that is uh, uh, useful uh, uh, in terms of uh, what matters in uh, depositing of the fats, but it is the hormone release from our body. So if you actually have a big meal, you tend to release more insulin and uh, growth factors, uh, and then most of the food will be quickly be diverted to uh, uh, fat uh, um, synthesis pathways um, and then when you are intermittently fasting you tend to break these things down uh, but you instead of uh, you know having the normal metabolism you tend to get a lot of ketones in, in your system now of course you know Hollywood celebrities etc you know have claimed that you know they, they can uh, go on a ketotic uh, program and then lose weight but uh, this is not the healthiest for a, um, a healthy mind and a healthy body because uh, uh, the brain will take its uh, toll. Uh, you know, you uh, the ketones are generally not the greatest for your brain function. Uh, they do tend to slow you down, make you feel really tired. Um, and then, of course, uh, uh, if somebody is you know doing a lot of intermittent fasting, I would suggest that you know try uh, the more frequent meals. You know, have calculate your calorific intake. You know, as I told you about for uh, for your build and height. You know, roughly how much you need, and then divide in, in uh, roughly. Um, uh, several portions and then take them uh, and then also think about you know adding a lot of fresh fruit salad uh, etc to slow the uh, absorption part um, uh, slow rise in the carbohydrate uh, and uh, fat intake in from the gut will result in lesser of a, a, a hormonal response in your body and then tends to accumulate less fat I think that is the art of uh, uh, keeping uh, yourself happy uh, intermittent fasting works in uh, difficult situations where uh, some people are, you know, as, as I said, you know, obese uh, and, uh, you know, have to rapidly lose weight, for instance, before a hip surgery or knee surgery. There are certain situations where you could try this as a last resort, but I wouldn't generally advocate it for a healthy person uh, 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 undergoing a, a physical uh, fitness training and uh, sports, etc. Thank you, Doctor. There's one question again from uh, one Mr. Himaru, uh, uh, person asking, uh, is sleeping long hours these days good for health? Because, uh, uh, because people don't have much to do these days, so generally the tendency is high. Uh, can you elaborate on that, please, Doctor? 
yeah, sure. You know, as I told you, you know, um, uh, for an uh, average um, uh, adult, you know, in their 30s, 40s, you know, six to eight hours of uh, good quality sleep at a stretch, you know, should be more than enough to keep the the the, the health, you know, in, in good shape. Uh, but if you do tend to uh, sleep uh, more than that, uh, well, you know, you could potentially put on weight, you know, uh, much more than the other the other situations. So think about, you know, how you want to play it. You know, if you put more weight on as time goes on, uh, the chances are that, you know, you'll feel less uh, fit and then uh, less ability to do exercises and then of course it could become a vicious cycle so maintaining the balance is is all that we should be targeting um, I would say target for about you know six to eight hours of good sleep uh, don't interrupt uh, your good sleep uh, for things like you know having a you know a movie at you know say two o'clock in the morning or you know something like that you know if you if you do break your sleep then that's also not a good idea if you haven't had a good sleep for whatever reason think how you could improve it you know if you're snoring a lot as i told you um, if you do have a nasal decongestant use it you know and then of course if you uh, do have a, a option of uh, lying on your side and sleeping and then reducing the amount of snoring that might uh, help you to have a good quality sleep with good oxygenation for about six to eight hours that's more than enough to uh, you know have uh, keep your day-to-day -day activity going um, but what you could do rather than uh, you know sleeping long hours and then just you know uh, you know succumbing to the inevitable you know uh, things that are happening these days so, you know take up a book and read anything it could be a comic it could be something that you like or you know if you want to do, draw up a cartoon or whatever I don't know you know keep yourself uh, keep your mind uh, you know working that is important uh, do a crossword puzzle, you know, or a Sudoku or something that, that can keep you entertained uh, rather than uh, uh, just giving up. Uh, if you are interested in learning, there are so many, lots of um, online uh, apps and uh, databases that have been uh, opened up free of charge, you know, for a lot of people. You can try them, you know, for instance, NASA has opened up uh, their entire uh, database of, you know, pictures, uh, images, you know, for you to have a look. Um, I mean, there, there might be something that really interests you. Um, or take up a DIY project in, a, in your household, you know, that might keep you occupied, you know, if you want to uh, build something that you always wanted to do, you know, and you never got the time to do it, you know, this is the time to, you know, think about uh, doing it. Of course, going to buy the things that you need for the DIYs is another difficult question, but if you do have access to things, you know, you can do uh, little home improvements that you can do. Uh, such as uncluttering uh, something that you were thinking of clearing. Okay. even if you know clear up your clutter in your you know closets uh, you know fix up uh, the broken leg of a table you know that you're studying or uh, you know fix up a gutter or whatever or the the cistern of the the toilet you know is, is not working very well you know take up a spanner and then see whether you can fix these things that will keep you you know occupied uh, if you have to read a manual you know download it from uh, the internet and then uh, see what you can do um, I'm sure you know you find it uh, enjoyable. Right, right, uh, doctor. Now uh, this concern of uh, sleeping uh, early, uh, sorry, uh, sleeping long hours. We all know that it is not what uh, everybody doctor recommends. But at the same time, without us knowingly, uh, we do not keep the morning alarm these days. So as a result, some people uh, might sleep a bit longer. So is it still a good practice to get up at the usual times you used to get up so that you can use that utilize that time for some productive uh, thing i think you know keeping your schedules you know would be quite good um, you know you don't have to necessarily you know wake up at the alarm but most of the people as i told you if your circadian rhythm in the body you know is still working you know and then uh, you are used to a certain pattern um, you you would be uh, woken up at the, roughly the same time uh, in the morning. Um, the, the mistake a lot of people do make is, you know, just to lie around in the bed, you know, once you're woken up, you know, you know, out of uh, laziness. That shouldn't be the case, you know. If you if you think, you know, you you had a decent night's sleep and you woken up and you feel okay, you know, just walk across your, you know, to the kitchen, you know, have a cup of tea, you know, see, you know, whatever you put on some music or you know something that you want to listen. Um, and then, you know, have a wash, you know, start, you know, uh, looking for a day, a day, you know, for your training or whatever you want to do. Uh, start, don't lie in the bed, you know, uh, then longer than it's necessary. Uh, so I would say, you know, keep your 
routine the schedule that wake up and the sleeping pattern if you're used to a certain pattern keep it but if you were a person who had a chronic sleep deprivation say for instance you never had a chance to sort of you know sleep more than six hours you know and then uh, uh, this is probably time to catch up and you can extend it to about eight hours that should be more than enough for most of the important people uh, doctor my question uh there are families, there are people in the same uh, domain house that those who are involved with essential services such as uh, telecom, uh, electricity, uh, then medical professionals like you. Uh, so in such situation, they regularly go out, meet people and do their things with whatever the uh, personal protection, protective equipment. But still, uh, do you recommend uh, what sort of a plan do you recommend for them to uh, follow when they go back home uh, under this situation yeah very important you know because you know the context that you have you know you should not uh, take it into the household you know directly so uh, my strategy normally i would say you know, if i you know before i get into the car or, you know, to the, or my vehicle I, before i drive uh, make sure that you, know, you have a, a you washed your hands, you know, for the 20 seconds that you are supposed to do before you leave your workplace. Uh, make sure that uh, you have a bottle of, you know, hand sanitizer if you have alcohol or, you know, chlorhexidine, uh, whatever that is there. Uh, you know, when you get into the car, you know, rub, rub that and then give the steering wheel also a good rub. Uh, make sure that you don't carry the germs that are there. Um, if you have a bag and shoes, uh, try to uh, keep uh, those uh, things, you know, away from common accessible areas so you know if you are living in an apartment for instance the first place that you come you know you keep it reserved in a box or something that you keep them there you don't take them out and then carry on to your bedroom you know that that's important secondly uh, uh, if you have young children you know that you know they tend to come and give you a hug or a cuddle you know i think that shouldn't be allowed um, at this time um, i certainly have uh, you know my younger son uh, generally rushed to me but uh, these days i have said uh, no, it is not correct. You probably have to stay, uh, you uh, give a flying case, you know, stop there. And then uh, you probably should uh, uh, walk uh, directly to your nearest uh, bathroom that you probably would want to use in preference. Take your clothes off. If you think they, they could have potentially been contaminated, then you know, put it into a, a bucket of with uh, soap and water and then keep your clothes in there until you wash them and then, you know, get uh, rid of. Uh, if you think you know they you haven't had much of a contact with other people and uh, you just uh, go on to a, a secluded area and then you come back then of course you know you could air dry them you know in, in sunlight you know you can do that uh, your clothes uh, but uh, important uh, you know, if you're wearing a face mask uh, um, use alcohol uh, 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 there's a way to you know do that you do that take the the covering out uh, and then uh, if you are Disposing uh, your glass, you can do it, you know, securely into a place where you should not uh, have other people have access to that, you know, particular thing. You know, you can put it to a shopping bag, tie it, and then put it back in your garbage bin. Uh, then you should uh, again uh, uh, wash your hands with uh, soap, and then uh, thoroughly, you know, you normally should have a, a good body wash or a shower. You know, if you can afford it every day, of course, it's not practical to you know, have a shower, and then some people do have uh, medical problems, you know, there. Uh, so a uh, good uh, shower and then uh, wear fresh clothes so that you don't cross contaminate you know, with your clothes and your uh, shoes and your equipment uh, while you're coming into the household. That's, that's very important. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, doctor, if you have planned anything in your agenda, uh, the, the, these are the only questions we received. Okay. Now somebody, I, I see something about the Tabata protocol, you know, of course I have to say Honestly, um, I haven't, uh, I'm not very conversant with that protocol. Why, do you have any idea, Mr. Sali, about this type uh, of protocol? No, no, doctor, no. We are not using okay. in swimming, to my knowledge, in uh, uh, okay. Sri Lanka and the US. All right, okay. So keep, uh, you know, keep yourselves uh, occupied and uh, be positive. You know, uh, this is, this kind of crises do come in life. You know, it is uh, unavoidable. Every hundred years, you know, we seem to have had this uh, situation and, uh, you know, there will be future situations, but the idea is to stay safe, uh, you know, do what you can do to help each other and, uh, you know, keep yourself motivated, uh, keep the services running, but at the same time, be safe um, and then be fruitful. Right. 
Uh, okay, thank you very much, Doctor. Any more questions? Doctor will be here for a few minutes. Uh, Doctor Kim, yes, there is a question, Doctor. Yes, okay. Uh, no, person has just joined. Uh, and there is a question, let me check on that. Uh, okay. uh, Yes, uh, yes, sure. Uh, it, it was regarding the previous uh, Tabata protocol. Uh, we will take it on another discussion, Doctor. Thank you very much, okay. uh, Kimaru. Uh, and uh, anything, uh, any more questions from Doctor? We should let Doctor rest for a few minutes at least. I'll try. And of course, you know, people do, do have genuine emergencies. So in that kind of situation, I would uh, say, like, you know, people, elderly people, you know, doing exercises, you know, they can have falls, injuries, heart attacks, you know, those things are likely to cause problems to a lot of people. Uh, so uh, don't be afraid to, you know, use hospital facilities, even though people are afraid to go out. If there's a genuine emergency that needs to be, uh, you know, uh, tackled with, you still have to uh, look after your family and friends and uh, get them to appropriate uh, places to get uh, treatment. Um, the, the worst thing that you can do is, you know, thinking that, you know, it's a simple thing and of course, you know, wait until it gets worse. So if you do experience, say for instance, for whatever reason, chest pain while you're exercising that comes and you know doesn't settle down, in uh, it goes slowly and every day you see this is happening, always you know, worthwhile getting it checked out. You probably need to have a resting ECG for cardiogram and stress test you know, just to be on the safe side if you do have cardiovascular risk factors. So, so uh, never ignore things, you know, if symptoms, worrying symptoms are there, you always need to get checked out. Uh, but at the same time, uh, keep a positive outlook for you know uh, what is happening around you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much for this uh, time and uh, volunteering to help Aqua Life and our community. It's a uh, Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Uh, thank you, everybody who joined tonight. We have had about eight to nine participants, and hope you will join us again for the next uh, session. We will discuss what we are going to do. Uh, online and let you know. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Stay safe.